fintech is on the rise. It's got a lot of interest. And we could see that coming through in the survey again this year. I'd say a couple of key things. Number one, uh, let's just look at investing. The number of interns that are actively investing is up three times from the 2019 survey. Interestingly, a third of them are investing in crypto and another third are interested in you know, exploring that potential. When we look at payments, you know, look, one of the things that's been the case, my colleague James Fawcett, he covers PayPal, Square. PayPal is the leader in the digital wallet. And Venmo, PayPal owned, obviously, as you know, is the leader in P2P. Um, you know, look, that is, is, is the same as last year, but the expansion versus peers is widening. And I think what you're hearing from PayPal, uh, again, as for James, is they have an aspiration of expanding that lead into other products and services to leverage their mind share that they've created with consumers. So Betsy, right now we're looking at a, a chart showing that Venmo was the most popular peer-to-peer -peer app, followed by Zelle. Uh, in my mind, Venmo and Cash App are very similar. Zelle's a lot different. Zelle's also uh, privately owned by a number of big banks. What does that popularity of Zelle say about big banks and the future of fintech? It's a great question, Frank. You know, to me, I think banks need to invest more in the architecture of Zelle make it easy to use, simple and quick, lots of pictures. People can read, but they like pictures better. So let's give them pictures. And I think that interoperability with other apps that you have is so critical. And frankly, that is one thing that fintechs have done a bit better than the banks. One other thing I noticed was uh, crypto. About two thirds of your interns, just under two thirds say they either hold crypto or they have an interest in holding crypto. Um, Crypto, in my mind, is something that like a, a lot of younger people are more into. I was surprised that it wasn't even higher than that. Um, just looking forward, how will crypto play a role in the, the, I guess, the shaping of fintech companies and also more of the legacy payment companies? They also have their own crypto link cards. They do it in different ways. Visa lets you actually spend crypto. Uh, MasterCard has one coming out where you get crypto rewards. How is crypto going to shape the, the future of payments, especially when it comes to these young people? Okay, this is an unfair question with a two and a half or three minute segment. Um, <laughs> True. But, <laughs> so happy to come back more on that. But I, on, the, on the one part, to your point, you were surprised only two thirds. Um, I would say we were positive. We were surprised on the more you know positive side on that. Why? Because when we speak with institutional investors, and that's just not just me, but my colleague James Fawcett, Sheena Shaw, who's been you know, working on the crypto work that we've been doing for the past, you know, several years, institutional investors maybe half or 40%. So it seems like this age bracket, this intern group is even more interested in crypto than our institutional investors. Uh, and interestingly enough, Bitcoin, 70% of them hold, uh, of the ones that hold it, and Ethereum, 60. So, you know, look, I was... Um, you know, spend some time with interns in the office at, you know, our, you know, kind of um, meetups, coffee breaks. What I was interested in hearing from them is, look, you want to have a diversified portfolio? Let's have some diversification here. Is this going to be the biggest slice of my investment pie? No, but, you know, let's, let's put something in here because if it does increase in viability and in uh, value, then I, I want to have some of it. So it was interesting. In the sidebar conversations, there was a lot of passion around crypto. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.